Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you a portion of how you can make a multi-currency store with Wix. So first of all, you need to go to add apps and you need to add the Wix store app. Alright, once you have that, you need to hide the default Wix store pages that are created from your menu. And then create a page and let's call it my shop. Okay. On this page, drag and drop a repeater. Leave space for the product name, uh, the description, the excerpt, the price, and rename the button as view product or just view however you like it all right now add a data set from your add menu settings connect to a collection and select the collection as products connect to data stores images and then connect the image to main media connect this to the product name connect the description text to the short description Let's leave the price for now and rename the ID of the uh, text element which is supposed to be the price, display the price as price, okay. The button connect to data and click action connects to product page. Actually, we are making a multi-currency store so we don't need to do this, remove this, uh, set it as not connected. Uh, remove it and then okay first of all we need to display the price but let's go ahead and check what we've done till now so publish it and let's see how the live site looks like so as you can see that all my products have been displayed correctly now the only thing i have to do is set the price so select the repeater and click on on item ready now Go to your database of products. This is going to take a while. The new Wix uh, database is really pain to load. Okay, now let's see the price. So this is the price element over here. Oops. Uh, like I said, uh, new database is a nightmare to work with. So the field key is price. Okay. All right. So we even named the text element as price. So item. Now the property ID of the text element. The text is equal to start with a dollar sign plus item data and now the field key from the database so this will display the price correctly actually i could also connect it directly to the database but then it will not show the dollar sign so um, the user might get confused so here you go now this is a basic setup of a store now we are going to convert this to a multi-currency store. So, first of all, we need to create some databases. So, the first database we need to create is called cart to store all the items that the user selects for their cart. And there will be a few fields in this cart. So, the main fields are product name, image, currency, price, which is a numerical field, user ID, and then quantity, which is a numerical field again now 
Another database that we need to create, and this is very important, is the foreign exchange database. And we have to let this database be read by anybody, but creation and updation is only limited to the admin. So in this database, we're going to have two main fields. One is the currency code, which we're going to call currency. And it is a text field. And the other one is a rate. So this is the exchange rate. Number save. All right. So my base currency is USD. So the rate for USD will be one. My second currency is Euro, so let's see the rate for 1 USD to EUR, 0.91, so let's do 0.91. Uh, let's put another, let's say GBP. Zero point 0.8. Okay, there we have it. So this is your foreign exchange database. Now you need to create an input selection and a drop down. Change this to currency. Add another data set via the content manager option and click on settings. Choose a collection and choose Forex. Connect the drop down list items to the foreign exchange database and select currency as the label and values. Okay, now we publish. Now remember to go ahead and sync the database so that your sandbox items from the foreign exchange database is converted, uh, is sent over to the live database. It's a bit of a inconvenience working with the new database that VIX has released but okay sync items so the older database was much faster but as you can see this database takes a lot of time anyways let's go ahead and publish and let's see if our foreign exchange database is displaying correctly Okay, so this is displaying correctly. Now, uh, you might have noticed that we put a dollar sign over here. So probably it's in the best interest to change it to the actual currency code so that users have an understanding of what they are, which currency they are viewing it in. Okay, now select this drop down, change the name to 4x property ID, and then Create the on change event handler. Now, just give me a moment. So, uh, I'm not going to code the entire thing right now, so I just copy pasted the code which was already ready uh, to save time. So, basically, we are going to, whenever the foreign exchange drop down is changed, we are going to run this function which will query the currencies, the foreign exchange database with the value that the user has selected and then it's going to use this formula to calculate the exchange rate and then display it so it's actually going to display two places so this is where it will display with the currency code all right and another place where it will display is a hidden text field that i have created which is uh, which is uh, which has a property id of actual price this is hidden and it will not be shown to the user but it will store the actual price. So when the user adds this item to the cart or decides to do something, it will actually pull this uh, pull this uh, price directly. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it and see if it works. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to change the currency to EUR. 
So there you have it. I put the two decimal places option. So whenever I change it, it's going to display to two decimal places. You can remove that by removing the dot, uh, actually changing dot to fix from two to zero. Okay, now let's go ahead and change it again. So, you are GBP. Perfect. Okay, now let's go ahead and add this item to the car. So, we're not going to go over the view product, custom product page right now. It's going to take a lot of time. Uh, so, I'm just going to do add to car directly from the repeater. But you can do it from create a custom product page by clicking on products, add a dynamic page and doing the same actions that I'm doing over here on the dynamic page. Okay, so change the property ID of the button to add to cart and then click a on click event handler. Now, let's go ahead and check the cart database to see what information we need to send over. So basically, we need to send over the product name, the image, the user ID, the quantity, the price and the currency. All right. Perfect. Okay. So first of all, in order to do this, so basically we need to scope the item that has been selected using this. And uh, after this, just give me a moment. The data and we need to create an object so product name I believe it was image quantity which is, which is a number price currency so one two three four five I think this should be good oh and user ID so in order to get the user ID of the current user we need to put Vix users and also let user is equal to Vix users dot current user dot id and now from here I need to take a little help from the products database to see all the field keys. All right, so name, main media, I think that's it, name and main media, right? Name and main media. I think that's it, so, all right, so first of all, let clicked item is equal to dollar item data set one but get current item so stores is data set one yes so this is clicked item dot name clicked item dot sorry main media quantity i'm just going to put one right now i'm going to go into how to uh, scope the quantity and stuff so i think this is actual price okay so this is actual price so so for that, we actually need to connect the data. So if someone doesn't change the currency, they get the price, the initial price that was loaded. So just connect it to the element uh, field key price from the database and it should be good to go. And uh, all right, so for example, if someone doesn't select a currency, right now nothing is selected. If someone doesn't change the currency and they simply to add to card, they're going to have a currency of undefined. So what we need to do is set, uh, create an already function for the foreign exchange database. All right, just shift this up over here so that you guys are not confused. And then, so the 4x dropdown dot value is equal to USD if you're using the primary, your primary currency is USD, okay? And now we can select the drop down value over here. So even if nobody changes the drop down value, we will get the correct currency. All right.
perfect okay yes and remember to wrap this because this is a string wrap this in a number wrapper and you should be good to go and the user id to differentiate between other users items in the cart and wix data dot insert cart data and i'm going to put some kind of function so when this button is clicked for the first time i'm going to disable the add to cart button and i'm going to put a await function over here and re-enable the add to cart button after it has been after the data has been submitted into the cart 